Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today we've got the pleasure of watching Thrall from the Russian server playing in the Tier 6 Soviet tank destroyer. It is the Su-100. Now, Thrall, I believe, translates into barrel, and I guess, considering that this is a tank, maybe it's got something to do with that, hey? And playing in the Su-100 today with the 122mm on this vehicle, and that's something that you immediately need to figure out about the Su-100. Some people like to use the 100mm gun on this vehicle, which has 250 alpha damage, but others love to use that 122mm main armament. When you use the 122mm on this vehicle, you gain a whopping amount of alpha damage, 390, can, which can really shift the battle in your favor. But of course, you, you get horrible bloom and you get worse accuracy. But does accuracy matter in World of Tanks? Well, at least in this case, it did. Now, the reason why I'm featuring this game on the channel today is because I, I, I have to admit, recently I have been featuring a lot of high tier gameplay, and so when I saw a tier 6 awesome game, then I, I was totally up for talking about it. And also, the fact that Svol is bottom tier. Now, it's, it's obviously easier when you're top tier to have gigantic games, right? Well, spoilers, Svol here is going to be having an absolute ginormous, an enormous game here in a bottom tier tier scenario. Now, this is probably one of my most requested things, and a lot of people ask me it on Twitch as well. They say, how do I do well in a bottom tier matchup? Well, firstly, you've got to look at what the weaknesses of our, are of a bottom tier tank. What happens when you go up a tech tree? Well, generally, everything about the tank will just get better, but primarily the, the main things that do are you've got less armor, durability, but importantly, penetration. One thing that's very interesting about World of Tanks is it's not really until tiers 9 and 10 where your, your damage per minute really jumps up. I'd say between the tiers of about 4, sometimes tier 5, and all the way up to tier 8, the damage per minute is the same, and the only real difference is the penetration. And so well, that's why a lot of people will load a lot of premium rounds when they're playing with a stock tank or in case they get into a bad matchup like this, so that then they can fire off those gold shells and have higher penetration to still be able to do something in the battle. Now, alternatively, what you can do is try to, to flank, but... Uh, I never really ever liked that as a, as, a, as a way of just being able to deal with vehicles because sometimes they're going to be coming at you frontally. Sometimes your team, like Stvol here, has just completely melted on one flank and you need the penetration to be able to get through frontally. The SU-100 isn't one of those kind of tanks that really lacks frontal penetration with 175mm on its standard rounds. So when the Carnarvon doesn't angle his armor here, well, oh, that was actually a very bad shot there. Stvol must have had a little bit of a flinch on the mouse there then you are be able to contest the, the front of a Carnarvon. Looks like he's aiming for the lower plate here, but he has dabbed the two key and bounces off the lower plate of the Carnarvon there. Well, actually, we, we don't know it was the lower plate. Probably wouldn't have bounced if it hit the lower plate. We don't know where that shell went because, of course, this tank does have 0.43 accuracy. Fires one blind there. We're going to have to see how many hit points the Carnarvon has when he's spotted again. And just, you know, firing off these remaining gold shells, I guess, here. But against the high-tier targets, you know, it's only really the Carnarvon and the Type 59 on the enemy team that do need these kind of rounds to be competitive against, at least frontally. And oh, wow, that's just horrible accuracy there on this 122mm. A lot of people will be saying right now, oh, I told you so, Cracky Baby, why didn't you use the 100mm on this tank? Where well, you'd have 0.4 accuracy, you'd have better turret traverse dispersion, you'd have a great 2.3 seconds aim time instead of the horrible near 3 seconds this vehicle has. Nevertheless, Sol's team continues to melt, and look at this lineup. He's got a whole bunch of tanks in front of him here that I guess he just wants to pick apart one by one by one. And when you've got 390 alpha damage, that puts the Type 59 in the range of a one-shot. Now the Carnarvon was respotted there, got taken out by the 88, however, and the 5916 decides to try and push across the front. Svol is making some good use of the bushes here. One final APCR round, is it going to go through the front of the Type 59? It does good stuff. Okay. All the premium rounds are gone. Now Svol is going to have to use his standard rounds to be able to contest the remaining vehicles. And Type 58, not the 59, is making his way across the front. Svol is turning the tank a little bit awkwardly, which makes the gun bloom because this thing has got horrible aim time and gun dispersion values, especially when you do turn the tank at 0.23. Reverses up to get further behind the bushes. Will he get spotted when he finishes off the IKV-65? And for a moment there, Svol was in a 1 versus 7 situation, including having 
three higher tiered vehicles. The Type 58 bounces off the Rex Vol, comes around the corner and picks up his fourth kill of the game, shutting down the Type 58 and changing his 1 vs 7 now into a 1 vs 5. Good start. And it looks like the enemy team are greedy. They're obviously super confident. Bottom tier tank, half hit points. We've got artillery support. We've got some big tank destroyers. Uh, let's just ignore the cap circle and try and make my way up the slope. And it looks like another tank enters. Now, I would figure out from that information that something was um, pretty much here. And then another one will be slightly behind it here that's starting to make the way up the slope as well. Unless maybe one of the vehicles went into the cap and then decided to pull back to try and get some height on the view range. So it looks like Svol is not going to sit in the same position and that's definitely something that you can do. Why not change bushes and on this province map you have got a lot of opportunities to do so. And you can see the scorpions aiming completely the wrong way but a tree falls there so Svol, bit of a misplay there to knock down the tree would have told the scorpion exactly where you are. But it doesn't seem like it matters anyway because the Scorpion G gets shut down. 371 damage dealt there. If we'd been using the smaller gun, would have probably been spotted and wouldn't have been able to uh, take out that tier 8 German turreted premium tank destroyer. Okay, great stuff here. Another high tier tank vanquished. Now up to 5 kills with 4 vehicles remaining on the enemy team. And the KV-2 now trundles in. Svold puts one shot in. Will he get spotted by the KV-2? Doesn't look like it, but the KV-2 turns the gun directly towards Svold. Reverse, reverse, reverse try and give you as much time as possibly can to be able to put a round through the mid plate and there you go kv2 did not shut down the trigger now Svol makes a move to avoid the artillery shell and try and get behind the rock for some much needed cover now up to three thousand damage in a tier 6 vehicle you know what half of that would be an excellent game for a tier 6 tank and we might have even seen some blind damage here and Svol still has three vehicles to handle on the enemy team before he can get through this one versus seven situation including two higher tiered vehicles and one specific Stura Emil with enough alpha damage to send him back to the garage with a single shot. Okay so what should Svold do now? Well seven minutes into the round he's got eight minutes left that's enough time to probably just chill here maybe see if the enemies are going to go into the cap circle because if they do go into the cap circle down below Svold should have shots from either of the bushes along here or alternatively some of the bushes along there. And so here we go, you know, bottom tier tank carrying a top tier game, although it is by making use of, of game mechanics, right? Using the bushes, getting some spots out by going through the front of the bush and then pulling far enough behind the bush to be able to get your shots out. And these are really the things that you will have to do if you want to carry in your low tier games. I see so many, I beg my pardon, but ignorant comments both on YouTube and on Twitch saying, oh, well, how, how do you do in a, how do you carry in a low tier game? And it's generally not using your armor, is it? Because every single bottom tier tank, I can imagine, even the most heavily armored ones like the T-28 are going to struggle against tier 10 tanks when they're um, being shot, even frontally. So it's more about being sneaky. It's playing a support role. It's trying to use either your mobility or just using your knowledge of the game and the knowledge of corners to be able to, to outflank your opponents. Or not outflank them, but maybe outsurprise them, as the case might be here. Okay, so Svol leaves his defensive location all the way to the south of the map and adjusts now to the bushes along here. Activating binoculars on this vehicle will amplify the rather tragic 350 meters view range that the vehicle has up into a fairly decent distance. The Tiger 1 through 1, not renowned for great camo, neither the M12 as well. Stvol is this is going to be a real important shot. Will he be able to land one through? Nice lead there. There you go, right through the side of that tier 7 American self-propelled gun, shutting him down with a single shell. And it looks like the uh, Super Pershing on his team is super excited about that. Now the Tiger 131 there exposes his side armor for a second and Svol picks up now nearly 4,000 damage in a tier 6 vehicle. Absolutely ridiculous stuff here. Will he be able to hit another shell? No, that one right into the rock. It's Svol going to adjust his position or is the Tiger 131 going to continue to try and just spot out? I don't think they quite know where he is. Well, if the Tiger 131 was using the shot directional indicator, he'll know exactly where Svol is and it looks like he adjusts his position to fall back a little bit. What is going on behind that rock? What was that Tiger 131 doing? Why He, he looks like he's quite an experienced player in the Sturo Mill as well. What is going on there? What is, what is happening down on that corner that is confusing the enemy team so much? 
All right, the Tiger 1 through 1 decides that he doesn't want to stay out in the open anymore and reverses up, but clearly his sixth sense has gone off, indicating to him that Svol has got his eyes on target. And is this going to be the shot of the game? No, not quite. He was pixel hunting over that ridge line there, but unable to go into the top cupola of that tier 6 German premium heavy tank. All right, Tiger 131 continues to go back down to this rock. What is it, some kind of a, a mecca for donkeys right now? Well, Svoll isn't complaining. Right on seven kills now, up to 4,200 damage, and only two kills away from taking down a one versus seven situation. And when you're not kind of a top-tier tank, that is really rather unprecedented in World of Tanks. I think the last time we saw a, a killer game like this, or at least I was able to, to find one on what replays, was where I think we had, was it a, a Hellcat or was it a Slugger? No, it was a Wolf. Wolverine, right? We had a Wolverine on the Paris map where our hero had to go and handle an Oho at the end of the game, and that was a, a serious nail biter. But Spoll here has decided that with 4 minutes and 20 seconds left on the game, probably able to try and flank around here, and I like what Spoll is doing, you know? Hasn't spotted the Stura Mill, is taking a nice wide berth around here. A noob might have just gone straight across this front ridge and been spotted and then taken out either by the Tiger 131 or the Stura Mill. Svoll is going to take a little bit of a wider berth to be able to maximize the distance to lower the likelihood of him being spotted here. He's going to make his way into these bushes here. Wargaming certainly wanted Province to be very strong for defenders. I've seen some tank destroyers having incredible games on this map, and there you go. There's the Tiger 1 through 1 and the Stura Mill as well. Oh my word. Ladies and gents, I think we found out why that was a bit of a donkey mecha as the Stura Mill has managed to get his tank on the side. Not quite enough so the Stura Mill is being timed out and exploding and it looks like the Tiger 131 spent his hit points trying to upend the tier 7 German tank destroyer. Looks like Schwoll is probably absolutely jumping for joy right now trying to figure out that this German tank destroyer is unable to move and he's at right where he wants him but he's got to be careful because the Stura Mill can elevate and depress the gun but can't turn the gun to the left and the right enough unlike the nice wide gun arc that you have on the SU-100 and Schwoll is going to now put probably another round there into the Stura Mill and just absolutely jump for joy as he puts in those couple of rounds. Is he going to finish off the game? Well... What is Svold doing here? Okay, look at that super push in chat right now. Super happy. Uh-oh, I see where this is going. I think Svold is going to be a bit of a, a cheeky lad at the end of this game as he proceeds to fire off all of his rounds of ammunition. Almost like fireworks celebrating a great victory here for the SU-100. But also, as many of you might be figuring out, that he might be trying to get a, a, a sneaky medal here. Remember, if you kill the last remaining tank with the last remaining shell in your vehicle, that means you're going to get a Faden's medal. Svol thinks, shall I finish him off? Shall I not? And ladies and gents, is this where we're going to see the downfall? Is this going to be a greedy mistake? Remember the accuracy on this vehicle. Svol decides he's literally got one shell now to go into the Stura Mill. And he can no longer see him with 38 seconds left on the game. He's driving right in front of him. What are you doing, Svoll? Are you... No, if you go into the cap circle, he's going to know exactly where you are. Oh, God. Surely the Stura Mill now knows where Svoll... Oh, no, wait a minute. It's his cap circle. Oh, well, stupid me. And there you go. Right there. Stura Mill depressing the gun for Svoll's last known location. And he shuts him down, picking up his ninth kill and securing 5,200 damage and nailing a 1 versus 7. And so greed, in fact, was not Svoll's downfall here as he gets that Faden's medal, although a fabricated one to say the least, but one thing that was not fabricated was that Kolobanov's medal for standing alone against seven opponents, some of which, which were two tiers higher than him at that point. A Radley Walters medal for those nine kills, a Halonen's medal for killing at least two vehicles which are two tiers higher than you in a tank destroyer, and that's a rather unusual one to pick up, and a high caliber for 5,700 damage dealt. Oh, over double what even the, the top tier tanks on Svol's team were able to achieve. And so, Svol, congratulations to you on this Mammoth Carry and Spice Super Bowl Shoy for uploading it on the whatreplays.ru website. And I hope all of you enjoyed this replay because I do read your comments and quite often people are saying, oh no, not another high tier tank again. Um, but people saying, oh, another top tier vehicle carrying the game. I would love to feature more bottom tier tanks carrying games. It's just... 
doesn't seem to happen very often and people just aren't uploading them on the what replays website at least at the moment and so if you've got some gameplay where you have been absolutely the boss as a bottom tier tank uploaded on the what replays website and if you want me to notice it put my name in the title and i would love to commentate on your awesome games very soon but that's it for today ladies and gents i hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up but if you hated it give it a thumbs down and as always thanks so much for watching you've been epic and hopefully i'll see you soon